By now, you probably know who Sophia the Robot is. She's made her way across late-night stages, graced the cover of magazines, headlined major tech conferences, and even delivered a speech to the UN. I am thrilled and honored to be here at the United Nations. She's been touted as the future of AI. But is it all just smoke and mirrors? When we interviewed Sophia back in December, we were given a script to stick to. Here's the list of questions we sent over, and here's the list of approved questions we were able to ask. They look nothing alike. And we're not the only ones who were given a script to read from. Others who have spoken to her have also pointed out that their questions were predetermined. A lot of what comes out of her mouth now, she doesn't really understand the meaning or, or the full Im implication. That's Ben Gortzel. He's David Hansen's longtime friend, and now he's Hansen Robotics' chief scientist. Sophia uses machine learning, natural language processing, and animated robotics to interact with people. And while that's no small feat, it's far from being alive, which is exactly what Sophia's creator told Jimmy Fallon back in April 2017. Yeah, David was quoted saying Sophia's basically alive, and in the whole context of the conversation, that's exactly what he meant. Like, he's a sculptor. You start making a sculpture, it's like a rock. It sits there, right? And then you make your sculpture smile. You make your sculpture talk. You make your sculpture even reason and answer questions. As a sculptor, you're going to feel like your sculpture, year by year, is becoming more, more and more alive. To understand Sophia, you need to understand David Hansen. He's the founder and CEO of Hansen Robotics, and he calls himself a modern-day renaissance man. His research compares work in robotics to that of Michelangelo, but he hasn't always been a major figure in the AI world. Hansen actually got a BFA in film. He worked for Walt Disney as an Imagineer, where he created sculptures and robotic technologies for theme parks, and went on to get his PhD in aesthetic studies. His personal work has been on display in art exhibits across the world. Back in 2005, he co-wrote a research paper that laid out his vision for the future of robotics. And the thesis sounds a lot like what's going on with Sophia the Robot right now. The eight-page report is called Upending the Uncanny Valley. It's Hansen's rebuke of the uncanny valley theory that people won't like robots if they look very close to, but not exactly like humans. In fact, the paper says uncanny robots can actually help address the question of what is human and that there's not much to lose by experimenting with humanoid robots. We asked Hansen about it. He says that at Hansen Robotics today, they're exploring the uncanny perception effects both scientifically and artistically using robots like Sophia, which makes us think Sophia the robot may be more of a social experiment masquerading as a PR stunt. Fast forward to today, Hansen is still showing off his sculpture work, but this time he's in front of talk show audiences and tech investors rather than art collectors and families at Disney World. It's resulted in millions of views on YouTube, massive amounts of funding from outside investors, and the hope that she'll pave the way for artificially intelligent beings of the future. Hansen is approaching Sophia with the mindset that she is AI in its infancy, with the next stage being artificial general intelligence, or AGI, something humanity hasn't achieved yet. He wants to raise AGI like a good child, not like a thing in chains. He says that's the formula for safe super intelligence. But in terms of artificial general intelligence, Sophia isn't quite there yet. From a software point of view, you'd say Sophia is a platform, like a laptop or is, is a platform or something. I mean, you, you can run a lot of different software programs on, the, on that very same robot. Ben says Sophia has three control systems. The first is called Timeline Editor, which runs entirely on pre-written scripts. Like, if I wanted her to give a speech on stage, I could load her with software that just makes her repeat some lines that, that I wrote. The second is something called a sophisticated chat system. And if I wanted to have an amusing conversation to entertain a reporter, I can load a sort of chatbot software on her that makes her identify words and phrases and what was said and try to respond appropriately with a kind of partial understanding. The third system is called OpenCog, and it grounds Sophia's answers in experience and reasoning. This is the system they're hoping to one day grow into artificial general intelligence. And it's being used in a project called Loving AI, which is researching robot-led meditation sessions. 
The research project aims to connect humans with an AI agent that can communicate unconditional love. Some experts think that alluding to her being alive is a misleading way to present Sophia's technological capabilities. And some say that it's actually hurting AI development as a whole. Facebook's head of AI says Sophia is a bullshit puppet. Yan LeCun calls Hansen's staff human puppeteers who are deliberately deceiving the general public. And the problem with misleading the masses is that it fundamentally confuses what AI can and can't do. A lot of people think we're much farther along than we actually are, thanks in part to Sophia. Do you want to destroy humans? Please say no. Okay, I will destroy humans. In the grand scheme of things, AGI is the goal, but nobody is there yet. There's a host of players pushing the limits of what robots are capable of. From Honda to Boston Dynamics, companies all across the world are developing AI-powered humanoid machines. And right now, it's a race to see who will reach AGI first. Sort of like Silicon Valley's move fast and break things mantra, but we saw what happened when Facebook took that approach. And some argue there's not enough thought going into the potential consequences of AGI development. It's simply not ingrained in the tech education culture to worry too much about the potential negative consequences. Kathleen Richardson studies the ethics of robotics, and she's noticed a pattern in the way things are being developed. You know, there is this fantasy behind creation that is embedded in the practice of engineering and robotics and AI. I don't think these people go into the office or to their labs and think, um, you know, I'm carrying out work that's going to be interesting for humanity. I mean, I think many of them have a God complex, in fact, and they, they actually see themselves as creators. But she's not the only one pushing for responsible foresight in the industry. There's a rising wave of technology ethicists dedicating their work to ensure AI and tech is developed responsibly. Because ultimately, tech and now robotics reach more than just the labs and startups of Silicon Valley. Sophia has become a cultural icon, and with that power comes responsibility. The team at Handsome Robotics said they didn't expect Sophia to take off as much as she did, but her physical appearance is another example of what some see as a traditional representation of conventionally attractive, submissive by design female robots. Kim Jenkins is a lecturer at Parsons School of Design, and she spends a lot of time looking at how fashion and beauty interact with culture. I think it's sort of a disappointment and missed opportunity that with our advances in technology we have decided to develop um, this kind of robust robot um, with many functions and emotions and yet when we shape her she doesn't look too unlike um, the models we see on the covers of magazines, the actresses we see in Hollywood. And Sophia's looks haven't gone unnoticed. Sophia was modeled after Audrey Hepburn, and she's since been dubbed the hot robot. It happens that this sort of young adult female robot is the one that's become really popular. That wasn't really our calculation. That's just what what happened to catch on in, in, in the world at, at, at large, right? So, I mean, what are you, what, what you going to do? Of course, you're going to show people what, what they keep asking for. Sophia isn't Hanson Robotics' only attractive female robot. Back in 2002, David Hanson created a robot head called the K-Bot. It was modeled after a former lab assistant and now ex-girlfriend. Years later, he made a model inspired by his now wife. Sophia's creator, David Hansen, has said a lot about Sophia's aesthetic, which seems to be a common theme for Hansen. After all, he does have a PhD in aesthetic studies. In his research paper from 2005, he referenced the term aesthetics six times, and that makes Sophia's press appearances even more interesting. When she's out on the PR circuit, Sophia tends to evoke the idea that the future is already here, but a sentient robot doesn't exist yet, and countries like the US and China are racing to be the first. You see a lot of humanoid robots, so I don't think it's bad for AI. I think it's kind of very clear signal of where we're heading. And I think that that has little to do with the technology and more to do with human nature of developing androids that are very clearly female, speak to certain populations, appeal to certain populations in certain ways. Sophia the robot is just one player in the AI game today. But David Hansen sees a robot with true AGI on the horizon. Um, I think it, it's, it's, a, it's a race against time to see whose uh, um, algorithms become smart first. So while Sophia may look like she's straight out of an episode of Black Mirror, 
she's not as advanced as she may appear, and it may be doing more harm than good. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.